From the Depth Instant Tutorial. Welcome back to Jimmerism. You're watching From the Depth Instant Tutorials. Today we're going to talk about hull design, the Citadel theory, and some other good tips for making great hulls in From the Depth. I have an armor tutorial that goes through armoring a little bit more in detail, but I will go through some basic principles with you right away. Here we can see we have the little armor example. In this example, this is the outer hull. The red is the outer hull of the structure. If you just go into here, you can see like heavy armor has an armor class of uh, 60, an alloy 35, metal 40, stone 16, wood 8. So basically, if you have a low armor class like 8 or 16, you're going to take more damage. However, you can see that the stone block almost has as much health as a alloy block. It's not a big difference. However, the stone block is more than half uh, the cost. If you look at um, the metal, you can see that the stone is half the cost of metal and alloy, uh, but of course it doesn't provide a good armor class. So, against armor piercing rounds and against explosions, it's really good to have some armor in the outer part then you will not take as much explosive damage. If you have a wooden exterior, you will take basically full explosive damage and your craft will be very much obliterated quickly. That is why on the outer layer of your craft, you should have a decently sturdy material like metal or alloy, but not heavy armor, because if you surround your craft in heavy armor, it will be so heavy and so slow and so expensive, you don't even want to think about it. Because uh, heavy armor is as heavy as lead. Now that's all good. So we have two meters of outer hull, which we chose for this one, metal. Why do we have two? Well, there is something called armor stacking. So if we go here and select our tool here, you can see that this has an armor class of 48. And that's weird since metal only has an armor class of 40. Well, if you have one block behind it, it will add to the, uh, the one in front of it by a certain percentage. So two layers is always better than one. However, more than two layers will not stack, it's only two layers. After this um, exterior version um, of the hull, we just have two meters of uh, metal, we have one meter of wood. Now this is not something you absolutely need, but something like this is called a spall liner. When we're shooting shells like Hesh on this thing, uh, it will spawn fragments. And if the armor class is very high, like if you had a heavy armor instead uh, in the back here, it will be devastating. But now we have wood. That means that the fragments that are spawned will be weaker, which is great. So, the fragments that spawn from this segment, if we are uh, met with Hesh, will do less damage to this. And if this thing was heavy armor, it would do great damage to this. So, to this teal colored part, what is this? Well, after your exterior hull and eventual spall liner, you will have something that catches, well, Hash heat will get spawned when there is a space of air. So what you can place here, a lot of people like to place wedges. Wedges is a very tested and reliable thing. And that will make the fragment spawn hit an angle. Uh, it's still gonna be air because you can see it, it meets here, but it's basically no chance they will basically just meet there. So yeah, it won't get through. Uh, and the uh, fragments will do less damage to this piece uh, than it would a full block because it's in an angle. Uh, and here we have poles and the poles can be used at the same, um, used the same way. Now you can see they are meeting here, but the chance that someone will shoot a shot that goes straight through exactly hits there is basically zero. So you can see this as uh, some kind of spaced armor as well. Uh, it is uh, an air gap in this. And the poles of course have better health and, and in terms of fragments, especially for Hesh, uh, they will do even less damage because they will not hit these poles in a uh, sharp angle at all. Acute angle. 
Now here we have ERA. This is also a place you can place ERA blocks and uh, I just discovered that if you placed ERA blocks or not just uh, backwards, they will basically cancel the shells um, hash and heat capabilities. So if you have ERA here and a heat shell comes in here, this will destroy itself and stop it. So this is where you would want to put your ERA. This stops hash and heat. So after that you have your interior armor. And you can do with metal and alloy for your interior armor as well. But since we want to cut costs as much as possible in a game like this, we chose stone. Stone is a great material for interior armor. If you're on a budget, you can use wood too because it has health but no armor. Um, and since this thing absorbs some fragments, it's just additional armor. Very good. Now, you can have heavy armor as your last step of interior armor. And that's usually not a super good idea, but you can see here, this stone block has an armor class of 28. And that is because we're backed up with uh, a full block of heavy armor. But that said, you shouldn't really use heavy armor for all your interior armor. It's not worth it. You should only use heavy armor to protect really important blocks, um, turrets, and... Uh, uh, the AI and other stuff like that. Now, uh, when we've gone through this little basic armoring part, we have this thing. What is this? Why am I showing you a slope? Well, when a shell is coming in at a blunt angle to this, it does full damage. But if it comes in at a uh, acute angle, like four to five degrees, it actually does basically half damage. It does less damage the more sharp the angle is. So when you are designing your hull, you should try to make it have sharp angles. You should not make it be flat sides if you want to optimize it to take less damage. You should have 45 degrees, you should have uh, more degrees than that. You can make real pancake designs, but you really need to think about having some angles. So think about this. In what direction will the enemy shoot at you? Are you in air? Are you at sea? Are you underwater? Think about what angle the shots will come into and try to make that side be an angle. And it also depends on if you have a circle your enemy, if you have broadside, if you have point at your enemy. And whatever side faces your enemy should be in an angle and you will take a lot less damage. My next point for designing hull is of course EMP insulation. I have a dedicated instant tutorial about EMP insulation. Please look at that. But when you're integrating some detection parts like this in pink, you can of course see that our green rubber is actually insulating this thing. And we have a surge protector here. And this can really be a worthwhile investment because if you don't do this, small EMP damage can take out your detection. And if your detection is taken out, you will not be able to target your enemies accurately. Here we have an example of where you should use heavy armor. This is one of my templates for my AIs. This has a exterior layer of metal and then we have some EMP insulation that is made out of rubber and inside of that we have heavy armor. So we are having this inner core of heavy armor to minimize its use because it's very expensive and very heavy and should only be used on blocks you cannot afford to lose. We also have surge protector in this outer layer in case of armor piercing EMP rounds. Just as a little example, I'm going to show you an ongoing project I have. This is a ongoing build. So, what do we have here? Well, I have exterior metal armor to take most of the damage. When we have big gaps like this thing, this is a lot of space, that will actually spread out the fragments of heat and hash shells a lot more, so that they will deal less damage to this part. Why do I have these poles here? Well, I do have these poles here because if we are faced with hollow points and things and big explosions on the exterior, I don't want too large chunks of the exterior armors to fall off. So I'm using just some wooden poles to just add some kind of support and some kind of structure. And this could be done with truss blocks as well. I also have spaced my compartments here 
as I have a little water pump in each of them. And that is so that they generate a lift independently and that if one compartment gets a hole in it, the other ones will work fine. So we have this exterior hull and inside of that you can see I have something else. I have a checkerboard pattern. Checkerboard pattern is great with uh, metal and wood or metal and uh, uh, stone. And that's a great way to keep down the costs of your interior armor. So metal wood, metal stone, checkerboard is a great way to have low cost interior armor. So wood has the most amount of health, po health points per um, materials spent. So it's actually the best armor in terms of uh, cost, but it doesn't have a high armor class. So we don't want it to face explosions. That's why this interior armor of metal wood checkerboard is a great choice. It's cost efficient, it's fairly light, and it still packs a lot of HP. So why do I want a lot of HP? Well, that lets me take a lot of kinetic damage. So health points lets uh, us take kinetic damage and stone and wood is great uh, sponges for that. Right, and behind of that, if something gets through here, so if I get a heat shell through here, um, I'm actually met with era. And this is something we called staggered era. So when this one gets hit by a heat shell, buff, it will explode the nearby ones, so they will be spent. But I don't want them to explode more than necessary. So I have them in compartments of four like this, and this is called staggered era. Now we would normally want to put that right here, but in this case we put it here. That's also something you can do. And inside of here, I'm actually satisfied with one layer of metal as interior armor as I have this staggered era as basically interior armor too. Now when building ships for example or airships uh, you need to think about damage coming from below. A good way to do that is of course once again to have spaced armor. So in this little compartment here we have a big space and then after that we have some important components inside of here. So this will be able to face a couple of torpedoes, sure, these engines are not super well protected, but you will always need to think about redundancy. You should have several things of the things that are important. It's a good idea to have several AIs, because if you only have one AI, your craft will be AI deaded a lot faster. Now this craft can be well set up for frontal damage. You can see, even if this front compartment is taken out, we have a lot of armor still. We have these four meter wedges, and then we have a lot of checkerboard. So now I spawned you this little prefab hull here. And this hull, we're going to go through something called the Citadel theory and some general tips. Now you can see here that this hull has the metal underneath and the alloy above here. So a hull like this, um, well, the alloy, you can see the alloy is over water and it will actually take most of the damage. When building ships, it's smart to have your really important blocks that you cannot lose to actually be under the waterline. Because uh, kinetic bullets and stuff like that, they kind of lose speed when they are underwater and deals less damage. So it's a really good way. Uh, and a lot of them are also set up to target things over water. Uh, so this alloy will actually probably take most of the flak. Um, and it's of course weaker than the metal below. Why is this? Well, um, this makes it a lot more stable because this ship is alloy and metal and metal is a lot heavier than alloy. You can check the weights here. Like this is five and metal is 40. Big difference. So when we are building superstructures of our crafts, it can be a good idea to build them out of alloy just to make them light. So the base of the ship can be heavy. If we want any heavy armor on this thing, we should have it in the lower part. And we can have alloy and lighter stuff 
above it and it will be stable without stabilization. Now this ship design is very narrow, what we can we do? Well, we can either just uh, reinforce it with some more alloy blocks like this, or we can take the opportunity to add a spall liner, just adding some wooden blocks inside of here to make it a little bit more sturdy, uh, have it, uh, let it have more health points and make incoming hash damage a lot less. When we are talking about hulls, the sharper your design is, like the sharper the angle it has over water and underwater will make it faster. But it's not basically the shape of it in terms of the, the forward direction. It's the shape of it in its actual movement. So if you're turning, you might have a really blunt angle dependent on how you set up the turning. So one design can be really slow when turning and one design can be really fast when turning. It all depends. But if it's hydrodynamic, aerodynamic, it will be faster. So you can see a hull like this has the potential to be pretty fast. Uh, if you do not set it up like this, if you're having it very blunt, very blunt angles against the water, it will be a lot slower. So try to make your designs streamlined. Now, uh, what areas are okay to armor? Well, here I have an example. I spawned a turret here and this turret, you should absolutely armor your turret and this is an area where the turret well is probably worth it to spend some heavy armor to armor the turret well. And another case is of course the AI. Now the AI should absolutely be defended by heavy armor. And you can see I put it on a little blue rubber slab here to EMP protect it. Now this is the Citadel theory, protecting the important things within extra much armor and not having as much armor on the other part. Because your armor costs a lot of weight and of course a lot of materials, so you don't want to armor everything equally well. So here we have our engine and our AI and we surround it in an extra layer of uh, alloy poles here. So the Citadel theory is all about not armoring your entire craft evenly, but instead focusing the armor around important areas that you cannot lose. And about redundancy and citadel theory, you should absolutely not put your ammunition inside of your citadel, because when that blows up, it's blowing up hard. And the more weapons you have, the more dangerous your ammo uh, box blocks are. So basically, you, the more firepower, the more dangerous the ammo compartments are. Uh, and the ammo blocks, they chain react and they do huge explosions. So what you should do is place ammo blocks in small groups like bigger boxes or smaller boxes. Now this is a small craft. So we're just gonna place an ammo block here and there, put them really far away uh, and on different locations so they can't blow up anything. And if you look at this ammo block, you can see it has a 12 meter radius. This basically means um, it's good to have it more than 12 meters away from something really important or if you have it a little bit closer, that like this is only four meters away, you should probably have a little bit of armor uh, closing the potential explosion off from any important block. Now, when you're building your new ships, have these tips in mind, but sometimes you just want to have wooden blocks for aesthetical reasons as the exterior part. And it doesn't mean your design would be bad. This is the Draconia and it defeats a lot of opponents in the same uh, cost class. And it still has a lot of exterior wooden armor. We have the exterior metal to take uh, initial damage and detonate eventual uh, heat and hash. We have this beautiful little interior compartments with floaty blocks. Uh, we have really heavy armor and some applique as well to defend our turrets. We have different layers of spaced armor to detonate again uh, secondary charges or armor, pier uh, armor piercing high explosive stuff. We have a staggered ERA in here. We have really much heavy armor on this and also EMP insulation to protect this turret's uh, AI. 
um, we have again and again compartments all over the place. And as interior armor for this thing, we are going really heavy with stone. You can see that in black and uh, wood as you see down below here. So when you're going and building your ships, don't let your aesthetical aspirations stop you. You can still make a good ship. Just have these tips in mind and I'm sure that you will be making some better hulls in the future.